Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm El Director, and you're watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. Today, we're going to be recreating yet another video copilot tutorial. This time, we're doing the time freeze effect. Uh, so if you want to go and follow along, you can download the footage over at videocopilot.net slash tutorials slash time underscore freeze slash. Uh, this is a low quality footage that we're working with, by the way. Don't expect high quality, but you'll at least be able to follow along. So uh, I do want to start off by saying this tutorial has already been uh, remade in Natron by another YouTube user. However, when I was reading through the comments, a lot of people were saying that they had a hard time following along because there was no talking guiding you through it. Uh, it was just music and watching the the individual go through and comp the shot. I have not actually watched the entire tutorial, uh, so I am remaking it, and I'm going to be doing it my way. I don't know if it's the same way that the other person did, uh, so watch both. Maybe you guys will learn some extra tips, tricks, and techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what we have to work with here. We have a shot of Sam Loya walking down the street, and he trips and falls. What a spaz. And then it cuts to another shot of him walking in and shaking his head at himself. Can't believe what just happened. So we're going to be merging those two things together. So we need to split the clip, and then we need to do a time freeze effect on one portion of it, and probably roto it out so then he can be sitting in front of this other version of himself, because that's what really helps sell the thing. So uh, let's start off by just doing our freeze frame. I'm going to add what's called a frame hold. And this uh, effect is actually really cool, and you can use it for numerous things, but in our case, we will be freezing uh, the shot at a certain point in time. And let's decide when we want to do that. And if I just kind of scrub through here, yeah, I like frame 98. I think that's our, our winning frame right there. So I just go into my frame hold, and I change this to 98. Hit enter, and we're good to go. We now have, if I view it, a frozen version of Sam throughout the entire scene. So boom, first part, easy. Now we want to go ahead and cut him out because we know that we're going to be putting that on top of this other version of him. So what we need to do now is add a roto node. And let's go and view our time freeze. With the roto active, we will expand the window and you can see this is really low quality, 640 by 360, ouch. But it's good enough for what we're trying to do. And we're just going to come through and trace around this here. And we can be kind of sloppy about the rest of this only because we know that uh, we're not going to see the other stuff of it here, like where Sam is and things. The, uh, the other Sam, I should say. So as long as it's good enough for this, that is really all that matters. So quick and dirty, roto job complete. And, you know, I think I'm gonna bring these down just so we'll still have motion going on in the background if there's any breeze and stuff like that. So that should work pretty well. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and merge this version over the top of the last half of the shot. So how do we do that? How do we get it to go to the last half and only view that? So let's find out what frame the cut appears right there. Frame 156 is the start of the new shot. So there's a few different ways you can go about it, but for the sake of trying to stay organized, I'm actually going to break one of my rules of no duplicating, and we're going to duplicate this shot. And I'm going to come into the first frame and make it start at 156. And what that'll do is now. I'm only working with that. And you can see there's a frame hold here at the beginning. So I just added a merge node to my frame hold. I'm gonna run my B input up to there. And let's go ahead and view this. And then run our mask into that roto. And that will mask out the time frozen A. And you can see now we have Sam walking in behind him. So the shot is basically getting pretty close to being done. What we need to do now is just incorporate the first half of the shot. Now we know that we don't want him frozen on the entire time. We want to start on frame 98. So I'm going to go to frame 98, right there. And I'm going to keyframe my mix slider. So I'm going to set a key. We will back up one frame and then turn that off. So now we're only seeing the background again at that point. And so he should jump on at frame 98. And there he is. Do, 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 do. 
We'll have to do the time offset on that here in a little bit. So now let's take this first one and we're going to end the shot at frame 98. Actually, let's do this at, uh, yeah, we'll do it at 98. And if I add another merge and we go A and B like that, so you can see how I've set that up, I can then keyframe this one to shut off on frame 98. So I'm going to put that down to zero, set a key, and then we go back to frame 97, and then we turn it on. So from frame 1 to 97, we're looking at the animated version, and from frame 98 onward, we're going to be looking at the frozen version. So let's see if that works. Let's go and rewind to the beginning and press play. There he goes. And then we'll need to speed up this other version of him, I think, to make it a little bit faster. So what we can do is actually add some recompression to the shot. So if I want right there, I'm going to add what's called a time offset node. So I'm going to go and add a time offset to my background. And we are going to basically just start shifting this forward in time by using negative values. So for instance, I could go negative 125. And we can see now here's Sam in the shot much sooner at that point. So let's see what we have now. So this actually might be a good value to work with. That works pretty well. So you can see a frame hold freezes your frame and a time offset actually allows you to slip and, sli slip and slide stuff uh, forward and backwards through time. Negative values moves it earlier and positive values would push it back later. So we're going frame negative 125, and actually I really like how that looks. The only other thing I might do now is trim it to end when he leaves that shot or starts to leave. So let's, we'll just go in even 200 frames. So I'm gonna go into my settings and set my last frame to 200, and we'll lock that frame range so it doesn't change anymore. And as we can see playing this through, this actually looks pretty good actually. Uh, my roto is a bit sloppy, needs a little bit of work, but if you're willing to, to put some extra time into it, you could very easily make that uh, work out in your favor. And let's just go ahead and make sure that this is all smooth the way we want it. I don't know why it's already starting to freeze there. It looks like we're missing some frames or Natron's just glitching. Yeah, I think that'll work out great. Now, you can see we do have one other problem to finish up the shot here. Uh, <laughs> he just magically like poops or poofs on like that. So what we need to do now is actually mask out the top layer as well. And we're just going to do a really sloppy garbage mat on this. So if I just come in here like that, like that, and like that, and then we run this into the shot. Now we can see that this is starting to work for us. Nice, very nice. So, once more with feeling, let's uh, take a look at what we got. Yeah, I think minus the uh, the glitching that's happening right now inside of Natron, I think this is working pretty well. So there you go, that is my take at the time freeze effect uh, using video co-pilot footage. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time right here on Indie Rebel.